Hey guys, and welcome back to the Young Watchery. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a State of the Collection video. I'm at a, a couple comments asking me to do that. Someone wrote me an email asking me to do a collection video. So here we are. I want to point out also before I get started that um, I have eight watches on my desk right now. And uh, my actual collection is quite a bit larger than this, but a lot of those watches are watches that I just accumulated throughout the years. Um, gifts, um, watches that were handed down to me. Um, they're not uh, particularly significant to me and they're not really of any particular horological significance. Um, so the watches on this table are really sort of the select group of watches of the ones I own that I really enjoy, wear a lot, and value. Um, so keep that in mind and let's get started. I'm going to start with one of my first watches which is the Victorinox uh, Officer Mechanical. Um, I believe this is the reference 241370. Um, I bought this watch hmm, about two, two, three years ago. Um, yeah, uh, in Miami. Um, so it's kind of special to me just because I bought it while I was uh, in Miami, like I just mentioned. And I've worn this watch literally everywhere. Um, it has been a trusty companion for years. It has been on my wrist in many foreign countries, uh, on many adventures. Um, it's a real trooper. This is one of my first, I think it actually was my first uh, YouTube video that I reviewed this watch. Um, the movement in here is the ETA 2824-2. It's not a uh, COSC certified, but it is running pretty accurately. I have tested it before. I don't remember off the top of my head, but I remember that it was running right about uh, COSC specifications. Um, 40 millimeter steel case, sapphire crystal, um, central seconds hand, it's got uh, the date there at the 6 o'clock position. Um, great little watch, um, a little bit maybe generic, not super interesting, but just because I've had it for so long, it's definitely going to stay in my collection. Uh, the bracelet is also phenomenal, I'll put up a photo with the bracelet so you guys can see. The craftsmanship that Victorinox offers at this price point is uh, amazing. Uh, I firmly believe that the finishing of their watches is a, a step above probably Hamilton and Tissot. Um, those watches offer other great things that Victorinox doesn't, but I think the finishing of Victorinox watches is just phenomenal, and this is certainly no exception. I'm wearing it on this Blue Shark Premium NATO strap, 20mm, um, sort of a olive drab, khaki green. Um, yeah, I think it fits the watch well. Next watch, um, let's see here. I'm going to go with this Seiko, the only Seiko in my collection. This is a Seiko SNK 809. Um, I love this watch because it, uh, it takes a Flieger dial and it puts it in a field watch case. I talked about this a lot in my review of this watch and why I actually really like it and I'm sort of a soft spot for this watch. Um, I love the bead blasted case. It's very militaristic looking. Um, I just think it's super cool. You know, a lot of people complain that the movement in here, I believe the 7S26C, is not uh, hand winding. It's also not hackable. Uh, the day change, or yeah, the day change takes like two or three hours. It's really slow. But you know, for the price point, you can't really complain. Um, it comes in a number of different dial colors. I think there's a beige one, a blue one, and a green one. I just wrote one with the black one, it's very versatile. And I'm wearing it on this 18 millimeter Admiralty Gray NATO. I think it gives it a great uh, sort of military look. I was going for the sort of um, British mod uh, watches like the Pulsar G10s and the CWCs. I wanted that kind of a look with this watch. I think it. Uh, I think it really pulls it off. Next watch here, um, bit of an outlier. Um, this is the Casio A158W. Just sort of the classic retro. Uh, digital Casio. Um, this is probably one of the most iconic Casios ever made, uh, right, be right behind the, uh, what is it, the F91, the uh, Osama bin Laden slash Obama watch. I get it that most watch enthusiasts probably don't want to have a watch like this in their collection, but for me, you know, just sort of a fun watch. Um, you strap it on, it's so light, it's so comfy, um, you barely even feel it's on your wrist. This is honestly the most comfortable watch I have ever worn or interacted with ever. And you know, it's got some nice basic features. It has uh, an alarm, it has a stopwatch, which I use a lot, um, and I think uh, 24 hour time. 
So pretty basic features, not a not a G-Shock, but um, gets the job done, and um, I just like that retro look. Moving on to number four. Um, let's go here with this guy. This is the Junkers JU52 Tante GMT. Um, this watch is sort of made in homage to the infamous uh, Junkers JU52 aircraft. Um, a very iconic, very uh, interesting, and just historically relevant aircraft. Quartz movement, uh, Swiss Ronda. When I reviewed this watch, I talked about sort of uh, why I think that quartz movements do have a purpose, they do have a place, and um, you know, I think this watch is an example of that. I'm not gonna get into it now, but if you are interested, uh, check that video out. It's made in Germany, so it's cool that I have a German watch in my collection. Obviously the movement is Swiss, like I just said, but the case and dial and whatnot are made in Germany. Um, and the dial itself is really what uh, drew me into this watch. It's got this corrugated metal um, finish, which is of course reminiscent of the actual Junkers Ju-52 aircraft uh, fuselage uh, look. It's unique and it definitely pays uh, homage very well to that aircraft. Now I have it on LA time and I have the GMT hand on New York time because I do travel there a good bit. 40 millimeter uh, 316L stainless steel. I believe the crystal is mineral. It's got a date aperture at three o'clock position. Overall, just a great, fun, casual um, watch to, to throw on your wrist and do whatever. It has 100 meters of water resistance. Um, crown is not screwed down, but you know, I, I trust the gaskets in there. That's really what de determines the water resistance. So this is definitely a great like summer watch, travel watch, something you can just put on and not have to worry about. And to further uh, give it that sort of summer aesthetic, I put it on this uh, Perlon strap. And this is from Oilet. And like the Casio we were just talking about, it's nice because you can get an exact fit and they're super breathable. You can get them wet. Um, so like a NATO strap, but I think a little bit, a little bit less casual. So what's next? Let's go with um, my most recent acquisition. And that is this vintage, or actually new old stock, uh, Doxa. Doxa is of course famous mostly for their dive watches, the Doxa Sub. I actually just did a video on that. So uh, please go check that out if you're interested. It's very unique, very 70s aesthetic with that uh, onyx on the crown, reminiscent of some of Cartier's watches. When I first saw the listing for this on eBay, I was like, nah, not my thing. Like, it's cool, but I don't want it. But then I just kept, I kept thinking about it, and I was just so drawn into it, and it was just, it's just incredible. I just, the, the detail, the sort of interesting touches, the finishing is so unique, and I just had to get it. It's a manual wind. I've got it on this Brooks Brothers one piece nylon strap. I love this sort of uh, collegiate color scheme, if you will. I think it really complements uh, the watch. And this is sort of the watch I put on when uh, I get tired of generic steel sports watches, you know, when I want something that's uh, a little bit more captivating, a little bit more interesting. All right, guys, five down, uh, three to go. Let's see here G Shock. You gotta have a G-Shock in the collection. Um, it doesn't matter how much money you spend, um, no watch does what a G-Shock does better than a G-Shock. Uh, that's my firm belief. You know, G-Shock is really the original tough watch. This is the DW5600E, and this is the most faithful uh, version of modern G-Shocks to the original G-Shock that was released in, I believe, 1981. The even more important reason I like the DW5600 is just because it's a lot more comfortable. It fits a lot better on smaller wrists. I also own a few other G-Shocks, but they are unfortunately just really big and clunky and they're just not a lot of fun to wear. I'm a pretty active guy, you know, I do a lot of water sports and stuff like that. So um, this is probably my favorite watch for that stuff. Uh, it's got 200 meters of water resistance. So that's great because I can wear this watch diving and whatnot. It's got a stopwatch. Uh, it's got a countdown timer. It has, uh, what else? I think it has, an, it definitely has an alarm. Would have been nice if they had like a second time feature. That's my one sort of criticism of this watch. But, um, you know, I have, my, I have my GMT for that. It also has a great uh, backlit screen. All right, next watch. Uh, Casio Duro. I bought this watch when I started getting into scuba diving. This is really a function-driven watch. 
you know, I've won the Swanji diving with me in, uh, in Mexico, in uh, Maui. Um, it's been diving with me everywhere. I've used the bezel a bunch. Um, the loom on this guy is definitely not Seiko loom, but it is decent. Pretty little bezel play, actually. This is sort of a generic steel sports watch, which is something that I like to bash on. But for me, this is, you know, this is more of a tool than really uh, a watch, so to speak, if, if I can say that. I don't really wear this watch for anything else other than diving. Um, it is a 44 millimeter case, so quite large. Um, but I talked about this extensively in my review. Um, due to the design of the lugs and also a relatively uh, compact lug to lug, it's actually quite comfy, even on smaller wrists. And the NATO strap I have on here is a 22 millimeter uh, black NATO strap from Blue Shark NATO. Uh, with a premium uh, hardware, a real tool watch, a real beater for me. So we're almost done, guys. My first true vintage watch. This is a uh, Smith's. Smith's? Kind of hard to say. <sighs> I love this watch too, guys. I love all my watches. I love the story of Smith's. I did a uh, video on that, so I'm not going to go into a big, long uh, story about that. But they are an interesting watch. I love their association with Sir Edmund Hillary and the Everest journey. I love the fact that they are a British watchmaker. It's cool to have a British watch in my collection. I know very little about this watch. I don't know what the movement is. Uh, it's a manual wind, um, and I definitely need to get it serviced. But other than that, I have no idea. Um, I just I love the I love the look of this watch. I love the aesthetic aesthetic. Um, I love the two four six eight ten twelve dial layout. Kind of unique. You don't really see that too much. I love the sort of cushion cushion case look because that gives this watch a lot more presence than you would think just based off its case diameter. It's got that beautiful domed acrylic crystal, which is very cool. This watch has really sort of got me uh, appreciating vintage watches. So very cool. I love this watch. Um, I just think it's super, super cool. So yeah, last thing I want to talk about here, guys, is not a watch, but it is definitely a corner stay of my collection, if you will. And that is this uh, vintage hand heart stopwatch. I picked this up a while ago at a vintage goods store. Hand heart is really an interesting brand. Um, they're probably most known for their association with Steve McQueen. He f somewhat famously uh, wore the uh, hand heart 417 chronograph, I believe on and off screen. Why did I buy this? Well, I'm a huge motorsport guy. I love cars. So, you know, this uh, is, of course, very reminiscent of, of classic, the golden age of motorsport. And also, at the moment, I don't have a chronograph in my collection, uh, except for, of course, digital watches. So it is nice just to have that feature. I use this for, actually, I use this thing a lot, to tell you the truth. It's a bit of a, a, bit of a time capsule, and I think it's very cool, and I really enjoy using this over, say, the, the stopwatch on my iPhone.